Hi friends. So today I am discussing uh, in a rapid manner the Jipmer uh, December 2019 questions of the microbiology. This is my book uh, which is available with the PP publishers and is available on the Amazon. So in this a lot of tricks and mnemonics are there which you can order up. Obviously not for this session, for the other sessions like uh, the next year, those who are preparing up, they can have it. Okay. So first of all, coming to this question that uh, the parcel of amoebic liver abscess may contain what? Cyst, trophozoids, both trophozoids and cyst and pre-cyst. So one thing you know that in the answer to this question, first of all, the answer to this question is uh, trophozoids. The answer to this question is trophozoids. And why is it the answer? Because uh, you know that uh, in Antibima histolytica, the infective form, the infective form is the infective form is a quadrinucleate cyst. Okay, so that you know that the infective form is quadrinucleate cyst, and this particular quadrinucleate cyst is ingested up with the contaminated food and water. So you know it mostly causes what intestinal amoebiasis, but some of the trophozoites they go through the intestinal layers, forming a which type of ulcer here? This was asked in the last uh, NEET exam. So flash shape ulcers. So remember in this which type of ulcer are formed up? That is the flash shape ulcers. So these particular trophozoites they go to the liver, and uh, remember the most common site that is for EIA is the liver only here. Then the lungs and then the brain that is what is the sequence of the EIA extra intestinal amoebias as you can remember them by LLB fine so liver is the most common site for EIA and in the liver also which particular lobe right lobe which particular portion posterior superior in which you can able to find this which type of pus is there in that that is in coffee sauce pus or chocolate pus and what is the investigation choice that is ELISA okay now coming to the next question the hot air oven can be used for what so hot air oven can be used for liquid paraffin okay liquid paraffin serum culture media vaccine so answer to this question is obviously what the liquid paraffin okay so remember this particular thing that uh, the hot air oven which all things it is being used up so first of all you remember the hot air oven is used for glass spheres okay this is being used for uh, glass spheres and all Okay, which glass wheels? Like glass syringes, petri dishes, flask, pipettes, and test tubes. All these glass wheels are sterilized by hot air oven. Then the surgical instruments like scalpels and forceps, they are sterilized by this. And all those things, remember like this, all those things which makes you dirty. Dirty means paraffin, fat, oil, glove powder, dusting powder, that is what is being called. These all things are sterilized by what? Hot air oven. And which type of sterilization it is? It is a dry heat sterilization, oxidative type, okay, charring, oxidative damage. These all things that happen in a dry heat sterilization. The question which is favorite here is that what is the control of the hot air oven? The control of the hot air oven is that is the spores of bacillus subtilis, okay, the spores of bacillus subtilis that is being used for the control of the hot air oven okay and it is also termed as atrophious the spores of bacillus subtilis or bacillus atrophious remember that thing also and regarding the autoclave which is a moist heat sterilization remember the control is bacillus sterothermophilus and that is a frequently asked question so you need to remember that okay so again i'm telling up the glass spheres along with surgical instruments and the chemicals like paraffin, fats, oil, glove powder, these all things are sterilized by hot air oven. Okay. Then this is uh, like uh, have become the favorite of the examiners nowadays, and uh, this is being asked in the aims also. And beta 1 3 glucan assay, this particular is thing present in the cell wall of these fellows, they can be detected in which invasive infections. So remember, it is seen in fusarium, it is then in the cell wall, candida. It is there, aspergillus it is there and cryptococcus is the answer of this except cryptococcus and remember for this the mnemonic is 
like cap and you can remember up the fashionable cap okay f cap f cap means the fusarium is there the c is invasive candidiasis candida infection a is aspergillosis aspergillus infection and this p is pneumocystis carni this p is pneumocystis carni infection okay so remember this particular one that is being used for like uh, whatever you call it <coughs> it is a, a f cap fine right? the mnemonic is f cap and whatever you want to make of f you can fine right? but yes it is not used for the cryptococcus diagnosis okay now the next one we'll take is this one the autolysis is seen in so this particular thing that is the autolysis remember one thing that the autolysis is being defined as all the colonies okay this particular fellow is produces autolysis of the colonies and uh, it can produce uh, the phenomena of autolysis also because it produces a particular uh, enzyme and the name of the enzyme is what autolysin okay it produces autolysin and it also produces another one that is termed as pneumolysin so one is autolysin and one is pneumolysin which you need to remember they are being done by produced by this and they helps in the pathogenesis of this also as well as the helps in the like uh, in the identification in the culture media and all because of them only they have that can and coin appearance not smell like appearance so remember guys pneumococcus is lanceolate shape it is having a not smell like appearance or can and coin appearance and uh, remember the biochemical reactions of it is bio that is uh, bile solubility inulin fermentation and optogen sensitivity optogen another name is what do it high hydrocoprin and the disease caused by this fellow you can remember by comps and what is comps conjunctivitis otitis media meningitis pneumonia and sinusitis okay so answer to this question is obviously what pneumococcus that is streptococcus pneumonia okay now coming to the fifth question and the fifth question is the likely cause of epidural abscess the likely cause of epidural abscess is obviously the answer is staph aureus in the lectures also i have told you this that the staph aureus uh, does a lot of infections okay one of them is epidural abscess other than that you remember all the skin infections of it cellulitis impetigo okay in fact bullous impetigo is done by this fellow along with that carbuncles furuncles all sorts of uncles they are been done by what staph aureus remember like this other than that you remember that uh, associates with the uh, butrium mycosis which is mycetoma like lesion and uh, it is the common cause of uh, native valve endocarditis iv drug abuse right sided valve is also being involved by the staph aureus along with that for a new one remember this thing that is somebody ask you the early prostatic valve endocarditis and there is a single organism named as staph aureus then that will be the answer not the epidermidis okay remember that but if the group name is there that is the cons then that will be the answer for what early prostatic valve endocarditis Right. If somebody's walls are damaged off and you are replacing them, then it is being done. And the organism which can damage them also is staph aureus, single. But if they ask the group, then the answer is cons. Okay. And those toxic mediated illness you already know. One is food poisoning. One is double S double S staphylococcus skins carried syndrome. And one is what TSST. That is the toxic shock syndrome one, which is uh, having a bacteriophage typing also. Type one is involved in that. That was a Uh, last jipper uh, question and uh, in limhans also they have asked that so type 1 bacteriophage that is uh, responsible for the toxicity of uh, that particular tsst uh, and that is a super antigen which activates more than 20% of t lymphocytes okay so that all you need to remember regarding staph aureus and mr is safe uh, i strongly feeling like one question can come regarding this that was the best thing to like uh, prevent the mrs spread that is uh, other than hand washing that is there but that is the best to avoid the spread of this and uh, it is also termed as isolation contact isolation that hand washing uh, more proper term is that other than this uh, remember uh, in 30% of the fellows it is having a normal carrier stage so 
not exactly MRSA but staph aureus is there and to remove that you need to use two drugs one is Miprocin and Bacitracin this question can come okay so remember answer to this question fifth is staph aureus and uh, regarding the theory part of it the spinal epidural abscess has an estimated incidence rate of 0.2 to 2.8 cases per 10,000 per year with the peak incidence occurring in the people who are in the 60s and 70s here and the most common cause division I just told you the answer is what the answer is the staph aureus that is the <coughs> answer here and what are the risk factors why does it happen the risk factor of epidural abscess includes immunocompromised states like DM, diabetes mellitus, alcoholism, cancer and acquired immunodeficiency syndrome as well as the spinal procedures including epidural anesthesia and spinal surgery obviously that will be there fine so the answer to this particular question is staph aureus now coming to this question the question is uh, that uh, a child presents with a grayish white membrane on the tonsils which is the medium to rapidly isolate the likely etiology a favorite question of the neat exam favorite of gypma favorite of pgi favorite of aims this is conibacter and diphtheria grayish white membrane is a pseudo membrane which if you pluck up it will bleed up okay so that also you need to remember it if you pluck that particular one it will bleed slight bleed obviously and the most common site is fascial that is tonsillar and the most dangerous one is laryngeal remember that and it is having a bull neck because of the edema it feels like a bull neck regarding this the answer would be what the answer would be lawful serum slope because in lawful serum slope early diagnosis can be made within six to eight hours whereas the definitive diagnosis can be made by what that is by the potassium telluride agar the best selective media for that is potassium telluride media other than that we remember there is some more hoyles okay macloids tinsdale these are also the medias of convivating diphtheria the aims question was how does the diphtheria toxin acts upon it inhibits the elongation factor too okay adp ribosylation it does and inhibits the protein synthesis of the cell right allic gel is important here allic gel precipitation test which is a type of double diffusion in two dimension remember that thing also which is also termed as hostile learning procedure other than that uh, shit test shit test is a neutralization test and the shit test is positive then you need to immunize if the shit test is negative already immunized like that and this statement is also very true that the diphtheria is dash not dash diphtheria is toxemia not bacteria that's why the answer to the treatment of it is mainly the antitoxin that is the ads anti diphtheric serum not the antibiotics okay and if the, at all they're asking that the antibiotics then you can use erythromycin and penicillin these are being used penicillin and erythromycin if it is like hypersensitive and all you can use that but these are being preferred for the diphtheria conjugated diphtheria what is the other name clavlophilus and it is having granules and all so all these you need to remember regarding conibacterium. It is being a frequently asked question. Then coming to this, all the following are the modes of infection with toxoplasma except. So ingestion of spotted reducers, that is the answer. Organ transplantation, that is the answer. Percutis inoculation, that is not the answer. And transplanted. Okay, so all these are there, but it is not being done by which method? It is not being done by the percutaneous inoculation of redesoids. So sporally reduced, that is an important word to be remembered here. Okay, if this word sporulation is not there, then that will not be the answer. Because ingestion of pusist does not cause, it should have sporozoids, then only the infection will happen. First thing, through the organ transplantation, yes it can be. And transplantation, mother to child, it is being done. Okay, and redisoids are there in the tissue and uh, in the tissue, that is being only not percutaneous inoculation it happens by eating up contaminated milk <coughs> sorry contaminated meat with the bradyzoids that is a tissue cyst which is having this bradyzoids inside and regarding the tachyzoids and all through the blood that is being transmitted up okay the drug most useful in tetanus is the answer to this question is metronidazole the answer to this particular question is Metrozil, that is metronidazole and uh, remember this this can come in the FMG exam also in the all India exam also that it's metronidazole 400 milligram rectally that is being given up or 500 milligram IV every six hours for seven days that is being given 
an alternative to this is penicillin so obviously preferred one is metronidazole but you can also use penicillin which 1 lakh to 2 lakh international units per kilogram per day and these drugs should be given with the antitoxin because the main thing is that okay so remember this particular one regarding the tetanus treatment and uh, the last question last uh, fmg question was uh, like uh, oh, what is the worst prognosis prognostic features of tetanus so in that uh, you remember one thing in this particular one you remember one thing that uh, if the incubation period of the tetanus tends to be like uh, less than uh, uh, seven days in the case of uh, adult tetanus then uh, that ought to carry a bad prognosis otherwise uh, mostly the incubation period of tetanus is around uh, i suppose uh, is around uh, 6 to 10 days and uh, the average of it comes out to be uh, round of uh, uh, 8 and that's why we call it as what 8th day disease okay guys uh, I'm feeling up that the question can come in this regarding uh, this particular thing so we need to remember I'm just writing up that what are the various factors which associated with poor prognosis in tetanus and if we talk about the adult tetanus, if we talk about the adult tetanus, so remember those factors are what? First of all, the age. If the age is more than 70 years, this is bad. Okay. Regarding the incubation period, just now I talked about it is if it is lands up less than 70. So remember, 7 is the catch in the adult tetanus. Right? And uh, remember like this, uh, the tetanus word, this particular word is also made up of seven alphabets. So age less than, age more than 70 and incubation period less than seven days. These are the poor prognostic factors. These are the poor prognostic factors of tetanus. Okay, they are the poor prognostic factors of the tetanus. Other than that, the third point, if somebody asks you, the third point is, <coughs> the that is the there is a very short time in which the first symptom to admission okay the short time is there from first symptom to the admission okay this is also tend to carry a bad prognosis fine if the period of onset is less than 48 hours, if the period of onset is less than 48 hours of the tetanus, adult tetanus, then it's a bad thing. Regarding the heart rate of the patient, if it is going above 140 beats per minute, that is a poor prognostic factor. The systolic blood pressure, systolic blood pressure more than 140 mmhg is a problem okay the temperature remember guys the temperature okay the temperature if gets more than 38.5 degree centigrade that is a poor prognostic factor so again if we revise up here the age more than 70 years the incubation period less than seven days i'm talking about adult tetanus the short time from the first symptom to the admission that is also there and period of onset less than 48 hours of having that uh, tetanus episodes okay temperature more than 38.5 heart rate more than 140 systolic blood pressure also associates with 140 more than 140 mmhg these are the poor prognostic factors of this particular fellow okay other than that you remember other than that you remember again i'm just coming up to this one what about the neonatal tetanus? What are the poor prognostic factors of neonatal tetanus? Which all the poor prognostic factors of neonatal tetanus? So that is a premature birth. That is one of the poor prognostic factors of neonatal tetanus. Okay, poor prognosis. So one is premature birth. Fine. Another one is here the incubation period is less than six days whereas in adult it was seven 
if there is a delay in hospital admission okay that also is a poor prognostic factor okay if by chance the grass is being used to cut the cord that is also poor prognostic one another one the low birth weight and the fever on admission the fever on admission so all these are poor prognostic factors of neonatal tetanus and i'm strongly feeling that they can come so you just go revising them before the exam of the need okay because i have a strong feeling that it can come that adult tetanus poor prognostic features are these that is the age more than 70 incubation period less than 7 and systolic and the heart rate 140 beats per minute more than and bp is more than 140 Okay, whereas the near tetanus, the premature birth, incubation period less than six days, delay in admission, the grass used to cut the cord, low birth weight, and fewer in admission. Okay, which of the following is on the WHO list of crucial, like critical priority agents for development of new antibiotics? The answer to this question is acetyl factor pomini. The answer to this question is C. This particular one is the answer here. And uh, this I have discussed up in my class also that. Uh, Nowadays, the approach is very serious regarding certain pathogens and uh, from this list you can get that the priority one they are the critical fellows and uh, what comes in them the first one is this only that is carbon dependent resistant acetylbacter bomani that is also termed as crab okay so they might try to a short form crab so carbon dependent resistant acetylbacter bomani is in the critical list the number one then uh, the other fellow is uh, CRA, uh, CRPA that is the Pseudomonas aeruginosa which is carbon resistant and the third one is Enterobacter C family members which are producing what ESBL and all. So the number one here is Acinetobacter. Then other than this you need to remember the high priority ones. The high priority ones the Antrococcus fictitium which is a normal commensal as such but uh, it is commonly found in the hospitals and it is becoming resistant day by day. So it is a high priority list. Staph aureus as usual evergreen fellow okay then helicobacter pylori compilovector species salmonella nizira gonori these all fellows which are being resistant to certain drugs they are on the high priority list and in the medium which are the fellows they come that is streptococcus pneumoniae which is penicillin non susceptible which is it is becoming as, as such this way because the drug of choice for this is penicillin hemophilus influenzae empirical resistant shigella species and chloroquinone resistant so, uh, this shigella one they are also in the medium list so remember at least three that is the critical one and critical one is what critical one is one is uh, acinetobacter bomani one is pseudomonas aeruginosa and one is anterobacteria which produce what esbl and what is esbl extended spectrum beta lactamases and the high one is number of them like enterococcus fecalis that is uh, the brother of it fecium and staph aureus methods resistant obviously and vancomycin intermediate resistant they will also be obviously in the high priority list helicobacter pylori clarithromycin resistant compilovector fluoroquinolone resistant salmonella fluoroquinolone resistant and this gonori cephalosporin resistant or fluoroquinolone resistant they are in the high list and medium one is nemo hemophilus influenzae shigella and fluoroquinolone resistant okay so this might be asked now this was the question that uh, the axillary yellow hair is caused by which particular one so answer to this particular one is corny bacterium tenius okay corny bacterium tenius is the one which associates with this axillary yellow hair and uh, this corny bacterium tenius is actually is actually just a minute actually this particular fellow associates with this ailment trichomycosis axillaris and that is characterized by the formation of yellow pigmented nodules around the axillary and the pubic hair shafts. This is cornibacterium tenius. So tenius associates with this particular yellow pigmented nodules, tiny tiny one. Remember like this. Ulcerans and pseudo TB. These are uh, now I am talking something about the NCD and what is NCD? Non cornibacterium diphtheria. One of them is tenius only, other ones I am talking. Ulcerans and pseudo TB. They produce diphtheria toxin. And they cause localized ulceration in the throat. Clinically, looks like a diphtheria. Okay, mainly the disease of animals. Okay, and uh, 
remember this important word regarding them that both are what urea is positive they both are urea is positive then this was asked in last triple exam the urolyticum does what so remember it does encrusted cystitis because it is come the skin convulsive which can cause uti that is pyelonephritis and it can cause encrusted cystitis then uh, this just the name that is colibacterium a mycolatum that particular one lacks the mycolic acid this is uh, ncd okay which lacks the mycolic acid then these are also the various ncds like pseudodiptericum striatum parvum arcanobacterium hemolyticum they are also the various uh, ncd non colibacterium diptheri and this can be asked that parvum is used as what immuno modulator okay now this is another potent question which i'm thinking which can come in the neat exam all the following are complications of mycoplasma pneumonia infection except myocarditis meningoencephalitis steven johnson syndrome osteomyelitis the answer to this particular question is uh, osteomyelitis because it does myocarditis it does meningoencephalitis it does steven johnson syndrome also association and how to approach of the question so remember in this the various extra pulmonary manifestations you need to remember all of them the question can come over it the first one is neurological neurological meningoencephalitis which was there in the option gbs gulen barre syndrome aseptic meningitis they associates with the extra pulmonary manifestation of mycoplasma pneumonia then the second one is dermatologic and dermatologic is erythematous maculopapular lesions first red color then the exanthem it associates exanthem formation and steven johnson syndrome remember this is a pure question which can come that organism which is associated steven johnson syndrome that is the most clinically significant skin eruption which happens in there okay strong association is mycoplasma pneumonia then the cardiac involvement the cardiac involvement is myocarditis and pericarditis they are associated with that rheumatologic and related to joints and all septic and reactive arthritis is being done it associates with certain uh, like uh, psychological features like acute psychosis and cerebral ataxia so these are the cns features which are coming in this particular one and the last one is hematologic and that is hemolytic anemia aplastic anemia cold agglutinins dic and hypercoagulopathy okay so hematological manifestation of these hemolytic anemia aplastic anemia cold agglutinins dic and hypercoagulopathy these all are extra pulmonary manifestations which are seen up in the case of mycoplasma pneumonia okay and the likely question the star question of this one is this that is associated with steven johnson syndrome myocarditis it does septic and reactive arthritis associated with this also psychosis cerebral ataxia these are neurological features which are there hematological one all those are anemia like hemolytic aplastic cold agglutinins and for these cold agglutinins we remember we do a test that is cat cold agglutination test so remember that particular one also here and uh, the last neat question was uh, that what is the most common cause of atypical pneumonia the answer is mycoplasma pneumonia okay now the 12th one the icu patients after 3 days use of iv fluoroquinolones presents with cramping abdominal pain and diarrhea the next step is so this is a clear cut case that it is being given with antibiotics and develops what that is the clostridium difficile associated diarrhea that is cdad so they are talking about what they are talking about the cdad and you know in the cdad the drug of choice for this particular one is now oral vancomycin but first of all you need to make the diagnosis and how to make the diagnosis obviously you go for what elisa elisa is this tool for toxin a and b which is also termed as what anterior plus cytotoxin and the drug of choice is obviously what oral vancomycin this is the only particular ailment in which you use what oral vancomycin Right, and we are talking about CDAD, Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. And the number one which associates with the CDAD is uh, not the fluoroquinolone laws; it is the third generation cephalosporins. So this question can also come. Okay. Now the anaerobic bacteria they are resistant against which particular class of drugs? So remember the answer to this particular question is amino glycosides. And why is the answer? Because they do not act against the anaerobic one. Okay, and why they could not able to act? The answer lies here. The amino glycosides, they are amino glycosides. These particular ones, they are not active against the anaerobes because their uptake 
across the bacterial cell membranes depends on the energy derived from the aerobic metabolism. Their uptake across the bacterial cell membranes depends on what energy derived from the aerobic metabolism. This is the catch. Okay, so it does not depend on the anaerobic stuff. It depends on the aerobic metabolism, and consequently, they have markedly reduced actin areas of low pH and oxygen tension. So obviously, in the anaerobic one. Both things are there, low pH and the oxygen tension is also low, like example in abscissinol. So they don't have a good action in the abscissinol, which follows amino glycosides. And why? Because their uptake dependent on the energy derived from the aerobic metabolism, which is absent in the anaerobes. Okay. So this also you need to remember. And in the last, I want to tell you regarding the this particular question. This was there in the AIMS and this was there in the JIPMER. And this will be there in the NEAT exam also. So remember how to prevent the ventilator associated pneumonia because infection control have become very important and the question definitely will be coming on this. How to prevent the ventilator associated pneumonia? So first step, minimize the ventilator exposure. The best thing is minimize it. And how to minimize? You should start the weaning of it. The ventilator weaning protocols. Okay, so don't go deep into that. Just remember up there are a lot of bundles to associate with the infection control and all. And in this, like awakening, breathing, coordination, delirium, and early mobility, also termed as ABCDE bundle, can be effective in shortening the mechanical ventilation duration. And this is one of the main things which can help us to prevent the VAP. Okay, second one is provide the excellent oral hygiene care. That that is very important. That you should. Not the injured of the oral surfaces while doing up uh, the various uh, intubations and all, and you should maintain an excellent oral hygiene also. The third one is there should be a coordinate care for the subglotting suctioning. This is a step here in the VAP in which you go for subglotting suctioning. So that is being done by the nurses and respiratory therapists nowadays, and it also helps to prevent the VAP. Okay. Other than that. This was there in one of the options in the uh, AIMS exam that you should maintain the optimal <coughs> po uh, positioning of the patient and encourage the mobility. Obviously, that was already discussed. And what is the uh, positioning? Keeping the head of the bed between 30 to 45 degrees. That is the semi recombinant position, which is there. And you should encourage the early mobility of the mechanical ventilator patients, and that aids definitely in the prevention of VAP. The gastric, the, the gastric reflex and aspiration can also lead to VAP in the mechanically ventilated patients. Okay, so that is one of the procedures. But remember here that you should have the bed at which particular degree 30 to 45. And the last one is ensure the adequate staffing because if you have more staff, then that will be able to take care of these types of patients in a more wonderful way. Okay. So again, if I tell that is uh, that what are the various ones which you should do to prevent the VAP, that is the minimize the ventilator exposure, and in that you can use of this particular bundle: awakening, breathing, coordination, delirium, and early mobility. That is the bundle which is have helpful in uh, shortening of the mechanical ventilation duration. The first thing they provide the excellent oral hygiene care. Coordinate care for the subglotting suctioning that will help to remove the secretions properly. Okay, and this one optimal positioning that is 30 to 45 degree and ensure the adequate staffing to prevent the VAP. Okay, so guys, uh, these are the various questions which were there in the JIPMER uh, 2019 December exam. And uh, I hope from this uh, two or three might be a repeat in the NEAT exam and in the FMG exam also. So FMG students also see up this once because it will be of help to them for sure. And very best of luck for the FMG as well as for the NEET exam. And definitely think that you all will have the wonderful ranks and you all will tell me <coughs> after uh, giving up the exam and all that uh, how useful these all uh, recordings for you were there. Thank you so much and very best of luck. Just focus upon the revisions of yours. The more you revise, the more better rank you will get. So mantra is 
revision revision and revision thank you so much